You've probably been asking yourself whether or not you can work with the limitation of the software. And honestly, it's something that we should not be concerned about. Why? Because the good news is that there is a workaround. And it means that even though the software is limited, you can always focus on the possibilities. What can be done instead of just focusing on the limitation and what you can't do. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Ali and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make characters pick up an object. Even though the characters are limited with their own actions, but we can still figure out a workaround and show you how you can open up your mind and look at the possibilities and what you can really achieve with the software. And before we dive deeper into this, I'm going to show you an example. Let's go ahead and watch it and then come back to start creating. Look what I found. Oh yeah. You're thinking what I'm thinking, right? No, not really. This is completely wrong. Ha ha ha. Come on, buddy. I'm not the bad guy here. I hope you've enjoyed watching the example and what you're looking at right now is snapshots of the same character in different poses from the 3D creators. I'm simply using Tom as an example to show you the possibilities and what you can do. So all I did is I simply took snapshots of different actions and different poses like idle, happy, shaking hands, idea and checking watch. The reason for that, if you take a closer look on the marked hands, you can see that these are different hand gestures that allows you to use all of those in different situations, depending on the object size or shape. So you can really work around that and it really doesn't matter what your object look like because you always have different hand gestures and different actions that you can simply take snapshots of and work with that. And then I'm going to show you another possibility as well, but that would be a scenario where your scene does not involve using characters. So let's start by showing you how easily you can achieve that. And then from there, you can start uh, creating your own scenes and really just have fun. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll go to my backgrounds and just simply pick up any background. For this example, I'm going to use the market. So I'm just going to type in market under 3D and then I'm going to use one of the market images. So I'll go with market number two right here. I'll scale it up to make it a full width like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'll go back to the main menu of my studio In the search bar. I'm going to type in money so I can find the image of the uh, dollar uh, coin that I want to use in this one. And that would be uh, this image that's called target. You should be using Victizi, but unfortunately, because it's not working at the moment, it's going to get fixed by September 1st. So later on, you can download any image you want. For this one, I'm only limited to the one I have right now. So I'm just going to use it. And so once I have it there, I'm going to grab a circle because I don't want the entire image. So I'm going to remove the target surrounded by the coin. And then I'll only just keep the image of my coin right there. And then I'm going to hit the shift key and the letter C to add a circle. Then I'm going to resize it to make sure that it goes around the same size of my coin right there. And then once I'm happy, then I'm going to select my circle layer along with the uh, image layer of the coin or target. Right click that and then I'm going to choose mask image with circle. That way I will have just the image of the um, money right here. Next, I'm going to go to my properties and find I'm going to go to settings on the right panel and find where it says properties. And then I'm going to change the um, rotation of the image on the X axis. So where it says 3D rotation X, I'm going to change the value from zero degree to negative 54 like this. So I can have it tilt a little like that. And then from there, I'm going to scale it down and place it on the ground right here. The next thing I want to do is grab my character. So I'm going to go to my 3D creators. I'll grab Tom. I'm not really going to work the entire scene, but feel free to do this and have your character walk in and then use the camera animation to create that illusion. Um, and if you're still struggling with the characters with characters walking action, I have a playlist for you that will help you master the characters walking cycle. You can watch it by clicking on the link that's going to show up on the top right uh, or after the video to learn how to make characters walk seamlessly from one point to another and also have them rotate or spin around in different angles, depending on what your scene requ requires. Next, once we have our image of Tom, like I said, depending on the hand gesture we're looking for and because of the money image that we have, it's pretty small. So we don't need 
you know, a different gesture. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click the character track in the timeline to take a snapshot of him. So the reason we're taking, we're taking a snapshot of the character because we're looking for a still image that we're going to use to make it look like it's picking up the object from the ground. Next, we're going to grab our snapshot from the library, drop it under the canvas, and then we're going to draw a mask. So now I'm going to go to the plus sign. This will teach you how to use the pen tool to create custom masks. Again, I also have a playlist for that. You can check it out once you have watched this tutorial to learn more about creating custom masks using the pen tool. So now I'm going to click on the plus sign that show up on the top left, right next to the left panel. Open this up to activate the pen tool. And then from there, all I want is to draw a custom mask around the entire, not the entire arm, uh, but just half of it. So I'm gonna click here to add my first dot of my line of my path line. And then I'm gonna create another path dot right here to create another to create a line. And then I'm gonna drag one and add it right here. And then another one that's gonna show up right here. Then once I'm done, I'm just gonna click on where it says connect shape above the timeline on the right side to connect my shape. This is basically what I'm looking for. Next, you want to remember to take off the borders uh, or the border of the shape. So you're going to go to settings and find where it says border width. Make that zero pixels because we don't want that. And then once you're done, you're simply just going to select your character along with the path that you created, right click those and then mask. Now we have an image of just the arm that we're going to use. Once we're happy, we could just uh, rotate it to the left side or tilt it a little, and then we can scale it up like this. And then we could just drag it and then place it right next to the coin where it shows as if it's actually going to pick up the object right here. And then when we're done, here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, uh, have the hand still selected. And let's say at one second, for example, I'm going to start by keyframing the hand to make it look like it's picking up the uh, money image or coin on the ground. So we're going to click on add animation above the timeline. I'm going to use position. Easing is going to be as is no problem. Now I'm going to click on the first keyframe and then I'm simply going to drag the image up a little to the left side still out of the frame. And I'll show you how to work around that using the camera animation to create that illusion and only show the arm picking up the object from the ground. Now, once you drag the uh, playhead of, or advance it forward in time, it's gonna go all the way to the coin where it is. So depending on how much time do you wanna leave, and I don't recommend leaving a lot of time, but just you know, um, either do it right away where the hand picks up the object really quickly or maybe keep a few frames after. Then what you wanna do next is simply select your arm image along with the coin or the money image on the ground right click and then you want to group these guys together the next thing you want to do is where your playhead is at is click on add animation we're going to use position as well easing is going to be the same next we're going to select our second keyframe and simply drag the image away all the way up you can make it go away above the scene like outside of your screen that's fine or you can keep it inside it really doesn't matter but it also depends on where your camera frame is going to end up um, so I'm going to keep it inside the scene to show you how you can work around that. But yeah, let's just go back from the beginning and have a look. Take, see that now it's picking up the coin or the object from the ground like this. One more time. You can see how smooth that is. And it's so beautiful. Now it's time to start working with uh, the uh, camera animation to show you how you can manipulate the visual of this and make it look like it's just the person picking up the object from the ground. So what we're going to do is we'll go to our effects and components icon and then under the comp we'll click on the components tab and simply drag the camera, drop it onto the canvas. Now we have the camera editor opened up and ready for us uh, to start keyframing it and uh, work with it to make it uh, to create that illusion that we're looking for. Next, we're going to make sure that the uh, playhead is, sim is simply here at one second and a few frames forward where the hand is just about to start moving. And then we're going to double click on the camera track to add a camera animation bar. The next thing we're gonna do is we're, we will drag the camera animation bar and shrink it down from like this. And then we will simply uh, have our playhead before the camera animation bar. And we will just adjust the camera uh, frame. So we can grab it from any of the four knots around the corners 
to shrink it down like this and only just focus on the object that is on the ground right there. The next thing we're going to do is we'll simply, as you can see, once you move your playhead past the animation bar, you can simply see that the camera frame goes back to a full width. That's not a problem. Make sure your camera animation bar is still selected and you're going to resize your frame to where the hand is at. You want to make sure that your frame is covering most of the arm and it doesn't show any of the cutout part of the arm image. Next is simply just uh, press play and take a look at that and then you can go back. So let's say for, you know, once it goes away, then we can simply just, uh, you know, add another camera animation. Let's say about here, for example, double click to add another one. We can shrink down the camera animation bar and then make sure that our playhead is after the camera animation bar. Then we can select uh, or click on expand camera on the right panel to go full width. You can still see that the image um, and the coin are still there. That's not a problem. We can just make sure that well, before this happens, you know, before the camera animation bar goes to full width again, we will simply just shrink down the image from here so it goes away. So now we have fully created the illusion. If I go back to the very beginning, show you what that looks like. Now you're going to start seeing that the hand is picking up the object and then it will just go back into a full width revealing uh, your characters in your scene. And that's how easy you can create that illusion and make characters pick up objects. Again, depending on the object size and shape, you may want to use a different action for the character. Find the right hand gesture and take a snapshot of it and simply just follow the same exact steps and you will be able to achieve exactly what we've done in today's tutorial. To answer your question, what should you do if your scene doesn't involve characters? Well, at this point, you're going to go into your studio and you're going to scroll down until you find the hands icon right here. You can just click it and then you have under categories, different styles. So you have 3D hands, 2D hands, real hands that you can use in different scenarios. So this is how you can use other hand images in case your scene does not involve characters at this point. So you can easily just drag and drop any of those images depending on the style of the video you're creating and follow the same exact steps and you'll be able to achieve the same effect seamlessly. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Me